one interesting thing that it kind of relates uh, to this decision making process, I was just listening to a conversation between uh, Stephen Levitt and Paul Romer, and they were talking about important life decisions. And Romer had made some kind of zigs and zags in his professional career, leaving academia and doing some other stuff. And, uh, and Levitt described some research that he had done that was published, I think, just last year on decisions where mm -hmm. people were agonizing over some ma a major decision, whether to break up a relationship, whether to start a new job or move to another city. Uh, and basically, they had them decide randomly and then check back on them a year uh, later. And they found uh, something interesting that related to change. And they found that even though the, the decisions had seemed very difficult, in other words, both options tended to be quite similar. Uh, in other words, uh, leaving and breaking out, they both had advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the people who made a change after this random, say, coin toss decision ended up being happier two months later and six months later than the ones who had stayed in their situation. And I kind of attributed that to I don't think he called it a status quo bias, but uh, I think that's sort of the essence of it, that change is difficult. People tend to avoid change, not like change, and therefore that will figure into their waiting process. So these two decisions seem equally weighted, but actually if you could somehow look at them dispassionately, maybe that new activity, that uh, new relationship, new city, new job, whatever, would in fact be better, but it's not benefiting from that. Uh, so I, I thought that was, uh, kind of an uh, interesting little twist on that. Yeah, so I, I love that you brought that up because that uh, particular work makes a pretty significant appearance in my next book. So, so we are, we're like on the mind meld here. <laughs> um, okay, so I love that work from Levitt uh, because basically what that shows us is, um, so, so there's an old term in like, um, you know, carnival games that you can talk about uh, something being gaffed. Um, and so what do we mean by that? So like, you know, like those wheel of fortune or whatever that you see at a carnival um, or, uh, you know, some of those like midway games and things like that back in the day. I mean, this is obviously illegal, but back in the day, um, they would be fixed, right? So uh, if you had a big bet on like something that returned high odds, um, that wheel would be gaffed. And, you know, we've seen this in like old movies and things like that where um, it would be spinning and then someone like presses a lever or steps on a pedal or something like that and it stops and obviously you lose, right? So, um, and, you know, I mean, I guess a simple thing would be like if a butcher put his thumb on the, the scale, that would be gaffing the scale. So I think about this concept of the gaffed scale uh, as it relates to the Levitt work, right? Which is what happens when we're trying to decide between the thing we're already doing a job we're already in versus quitting and going and doing something else. And it turns out that the, that it's gaffed towards sticking with the thing that you're already doing. Um, and there's all sorts of reasons why it's gaffed. You mentioned one of them, status quo bias would be one of them, sunk cost is another, but that goes broadly into this problem of escalation of commitment that we tend to, tend to over persevere in, on, in courses of action that we've already sort of uh, invested some time and resources in. So uh, people talk a lot about grit. It's an incredibly important concept. Obviously, Angela Duckworth's work is amazing. And she's talking about sort of the under perseverance side of it, like we quit things too early. But there's a whole body of work. Um, Barry Staw is one of the big people in this um, world that's really about over perseverance. And there's a lot of forces that cause us to continue in losing endeavors. So given that there's a lot of forces that cause us to continue in losing endeavors, the way that I interpret that work from Levitt is that what he discovered is that the scale is gaffed. So that when you get to a point where you think, should I stay in my job or quit? And you're actually having a serious conversation with you, yourself about it. It means that quitting is really the huge winner because the thumb is on the scale for staying. So given that the thumb is on the scale for staying, if you're saying, I think it's an equal option for me to leave, that means that leaving must be the way better choice. So he had this site, as you said, where people would go and it would like flip a coin for you when you had those tough decisions. And not everybody listened to what the coin said, but of the people who went, who listened to what the coin said and went and switched, as you said, you know, you check in on them six months later, it turns out they're a lot happier. And I think it's for that reason. I think it's because the scale is gaffed, right? Like sticking with the thing you're doing, it's just, there's so many cognitive forces that are pushing you to do that that when you get to a point where you think it's close, it's actually not close at all.
I hope you enjoyed this Brainfluence Brief. If you didn't, help me out by telling me why in a comment. But if you did find value, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. The full episode is available on YouTube and audio outlets like Apple, Spotify, and Google. Visit rogerdooley.com slash podcast for a formatted text version, plus links and other resources. Thanks for tuning in.